This is part 2 of the Chinese single day mailbag video. This video also has some interesting products and not all are Chinese. Grüezi YouTubers, here is the guy with a Swiss accent with a new episode around sensors and microprocessors. Let's continue. Next one, very light. These are E28 modules and they have a IPX antenna adapter, so they are something wireless. They contain SX1280 chips and they are long range, low power, 2.4 gigahertz. And most of us know this Semtech company because they manufacture LoRa, our LoRa chips. And really, these modules here have LoRa capabilities, but on 2.4 gigahertz. Very interesting. These modules should be able to bridge much bigger distances than, for example, BLE or Wi-Fi. So stay tuned. I will definitely check these out and compare them with the uh, Wi-Fi modules. Next one. These are small JST connectors and I need them for one of the projects. It is nearly impossible to manufacture these small connectors yourself, so I usually buy them. But of course, then you have to buy them in all different variants for each of the project. Maybe I will have in the future once most of the common number of pins. This one is 10 pin, I think. Next one. This is an interesting device. Something quite new, I think, at least for me. It is a PIR, but it has not only one channel, it has more channels. Let's have a look at the data sheet. It is a AMG8833. 8 times 8 thermal image array temperature sensor. It's not cheap, but it's much cheaper than it was a few months ago. And this is the data sheet of Panasonic, the manufacturer. It is for two-dimensional detection of temperature. And we have here a 8 pixels, 8 pixels, and 3 means 3.3 volt, and here a 3 means high gain. So we have a high gain, 8 times 8 pixel infrared sensor and I'm really interested in how this works because viewers told me that this is a very precise module and it is capable to do very very good infrared detection much better than our normal PIR sensors but of course it has to be much better because it's <laughs> way more expensive than the normal ones but it should be possible to do some thermal images with this device here next one and interestingly this comes from vietnam i heard that some of our chinese colleagues changed now to send from vietnam because of some tariffs or whatever at least i don't know what it is but this came from vietnam so I didn't order that in Vietnam, I ordered that on AliExpress, just as normal. Both are the same and they are power supplies with a battery. So I put the 18650 cells in this holder and switched it on. And now let's check if we have 5 volt. Yes, we have 5 volt. And now I connect a load. It draws one ampere. No big problem, still 4.97 volt. And if we check the specifications, it said 5 volt, 4 ampere, 3 volt, 1 ampere. And if we have a close look, we see that we have 3 volt, 3 volt, 3 volt, 
and 5 volt, 5 volt, 5 volt. And this is why I bought these battery holders because they have a boost converter here and also ha have a charging that we can charge this LiPo battery. And this is well possible that this is a quite universal device to power our modules. I'm not too much interested in the 4 ampere output on 5 volt. I'm more interested in having 3.3 3 .3 volt and 5 volt and having also possibility to charge the battery here. So um, I will definitely check this one out. It looks very promises, promising, of course. It's from Wemos, as <laughs> everything is from Wemos these days. That's okay. So I have two of them and you will probably see a, sh a short review. I even hope that I can connect maybe a solar, pa a solar panel, a small one, to this 5 volt input here. And then we would have a very, very nice power supply. And of course we have also to check the efficiency of this module. And by the way, they are really cheap, two dollars, free shipping. Next one, not from China, from Amazon. Like a book, and it is a book. And I liked this title. Don't make me think. That seems to be really appropriate for these times. It is about creating user interfaces. And I think this is something I am interested in. And this is a bestseller uh, from Steve Krug. It's not new, it's revisited, but the web usability and also mobile. But I think we can all learn from how to reduce complexity in our user interfaces. I had some discussions with a few viewers on my weather forecast thingy which should project the weather in the morning and in the afternoon. And uh, people said, this is not a good user interface. These LEDs are too complicated. Maybe I learn now something. Next one. These are AM612, five pieces. And I bought them because one of the viewers suggested that they are very nice PIR detectors. And the interesting thing on these PIR detectors, they do not need a lot of working current, only 15 microampere typical, which is really not a lot. They work at 3.3 volt, which is fine with our ESPs. I took one out. It looks like all PIR sensors and this is why I ordered also a few of those. And they should fit perfectly here. So I have my own PIR sensor. And here I got a new package from Armtronics. You might remember the last um, video. I have no clue what they sent me, so I just have to open it. I got a new one or another one of these Armtronics Sonoffs, if I might say so. And interesting, they replaced the ESP8266 with an ESP32. And for relays and a, if this is a right one, a high link power supply. The PCB looks nice and it has proper slotting here. So you even should be able to switch 220 volt, I think. So a nice board and here we have to open it, of course. This gives me the chance to show you a very nice set here, which is very important, probably not all of them. This is the one I use mostly. These are prying tools. And they are very, very good in, uh, for, for opening these kind of things.
Ah, <laughs> even the best thing does not work if I don't remove the screws. Now it worked. The last time they sent me this single channel triac and this time they sent me a dual channel. Both work the same and both are different to the Sonoffs. The Sonoffs use relay and can only switch on and off and these can dim. This one comes from Switzerland, completely different packaged than the things from China. And people who saw my last videos probably know what it could be. It also comes from Playzone, the Adafruit dealer here in Switzerland. And it is a Feather M4 Express. So I had a Feather M0 Express and I always wanted to have an M4, but at this point in time it was not available. Now I saw that they sell it also in Switzerland. Now I have an M4 and an M0, and this is for my Python stuff. Next one, quite a big one. It has specifications. It is a multimeter. And this is a gift from Banggood. I did not have to pay for that one. Like that it looks normal, but it has a graphical interface. So it is a combination somehow between a multimeter and a oscilloscope. Could this MT8206 be interesting for a beginner, which does not want to spend too much money for a multimeter plus an oscilloscope? Generally, a courtesy of modern multimeters is good enough for a typical maker. The same applies for high voltages and CAT ratings. Beginners never ever should try to work with high AC voltages like 110 or 230 volts or above. So we do not have to test it. But what is important? A beginner wants to check voltages and currents, mostly DC. He wants to measure ohms and continuity and check the direction of a diode. For measuring capacitors, I usually recommend to buy a cheap component tester because it has many additional features. So, only nice to have. Auto-ranging is a must for me because I do not want to adjust the range in the middle of measuring. This meter, as most basic multimeters, fulfills all the above requirements. But it is more expensive, so we have to check if the additional features are worth the money the oscilloscope and the frequency counter. The first test is to measure a 1 kHz sine wave with 0 and 5 volts. My expensive oscilloscope shows a similar curve than the multimeter. Unfortunately, we have no vertical axis on the MAS tool, which would show us the voltage of the signal. Fortunately, we have a voltage number displayed, but this is not the peak-to-peak -peak voltage. If we change from a sine to a square wave, this value changes. So we have no indication of the real voltages, which for me is already a killer. Let's check if we could measure a typical logical signal and increase the frequency of the square wave to see if we would be able to measure digital signals on the Arduino. At 10 kHz, the digital signal starts to look like a sine wave and at 20 kHz the counter comes to a limit. This meter may be ok for checking on a periodic PWM signal, but not more. And we have no possibility to trigger a signal, which is necessary for most measurements on microcontrollers. So we can stop the test. As a multimeter it works ok, but it's too expensive. As a replacement for an oscilloscope, for an Arduino maker, it does not fulfill the most basic features. My recommendation is to wait until you have the money and buy a dedicated oscilloscope. Either one for the desktop or a pocket scope I showed in an earlier video. And this is also a novelty on this channel, a package which comes from Malaysia, from Penang. 
And this is also something I did not order. They wanted to send it to me. They are printed circuit boards. So obviously motor drivers. I think they contacted me because of the summer project, right? Dual channel 10 ampere DC motor controller. This looks like a well-made PCB. This is probably a competitor to this monster board, which I, which I currently use on my tank. So I might use it there. And these are really nice small packages. Ah, this is a single channel DC brush motor driver. 6 to 30 volt, 30 amps peak current, 13 ampere continuous current. And it even has a peak current protection. So a similar nicely looking PCB and four transistors for an H bridge, I assume. Same input, these Grove connectors. They have a very nicely made homepage and they sell many other products uh, like Raspberry Pi and, and stuff like that. And they sell in um, Malaysian currency. And uh, the dual board costs $18.50 and the single channel costs around $9.50. And I like their slogan, trust me, I'm a maker. I hope part two of this mailbag was useful or at least interesting for you. And now you can continue your shopping tour. You find all the links in the video description. Bye.